Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. In my last video, I did a very large vehicle, the Killer Whale, so called because it almost killed me. That review was huge. It took a lot of time, a lot of effort, and it was really exhausting. This time I'm ready to do something smaller, something a little easier. So let's look at an action figure this time. We're gonna look at Zarana. She came out in 1986 and she was the sister of Zartan. Zartan of course was a character introduced in 1984. He was very popular and so following up on the popularity of Zartan, in 1986 we got Zartan's sister Zarana and his brother Xandar. Zarana had a couple variants, one of which was a very minor color difference. I'm not really gonna take a look at that one. However, the other variant was major. She had an entirely different head. And so we're going to look at both of those versions of Zarana. This is Zarana. And as you can see, we have two figures, which means we will be looking at a variant. Zarana was introduced in 1986. She was also sold in 1987. She was discontinued in 1988, but she showed up sometime later resold at a convention uh, with different accessories. Zarana is the sister of Zartan, who was introduced in 1984. Uh, he was a very popular character, and he had a gimmick. He was made out of a color-changing plastic that would change color in sunlight. So Zartan was a very popular character so they wanted to capitalize on the popularity of Zartan so in 1986 they introduced Zarana and Zartan's brother Xandar. I don't know if Zartan, Zarana, and Xandar are supposed to be their real names but if so their parents really had a thing for Z names. Zartan was the leader of a motorcycle gang called the Dreadnoughts and in 1985 we got the first three Dreadnought action figures Torch, Ripper, and Buzzer. And then the following year in 1986 we got Zarana and Xandar and since they were related to Zartan they were by extension Dreadnoughts. So these two figures expanded this subgroup of Dreadnoughts within the G.I. Joe universe. Let's take a look at Zarana's accessories and she came with this weapon and this looks like a rifle but it is not. The contents of the card that Zarana was packaged in call this a razor honed spur cutting weapon. And this is somewhat typical of the Dreadnoughts. They didn't seem to carry firearms all that often, uh, and most of the time they were given some kind of a cutting weapon, uh, maybe a projectile weapon that was not a firearm. Uh, it seems like the Dreadnoughts were more interested in property damage than they were in using lethal force. You can see some pretty impressive detail of the blades there. You can see the rivets on the blades. That is really amazing. So apparently the there's supposed to be a mechanism inside the body of this weapon that spins this blade uh, so that it will cut. And if you look on this side, it kind of looks like there's a belt drive uh, that is coming out of the front end uh, that would drive this spur. So I guess that's how it's supposed to work. I guess this accessory is okay. I have to be honest, I'm not typically impressed with Dreadnought weapons. And this is a pretty typical Dreadnought weapon, so this is not my favorite. Zarena came with one other accessory, her red backpack. Her very red backpack. Uh, it's really hard to mistake this for anyone else's. This is definitely Zarena's. It just really stands out like a sore thumb. It does have some sculpted detail on here. Here, though it may be kind of hard to see because it is all red. Uh, it has some pouches with some flaps and some buckles up here. It has a pair of grenades, both also red. I don't know where she picked up red grenades, but she has grenades that match the color of her backpack. Uh, it has, looks like another pouch down here. It has this cylindrical thing, and I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. Um, it uh, Maybe it's a scope of some kind. Um, I really don't know. It does, however, give her Zarana's backpack a very distinctive look. I honestly don't think she needs this backpack. Um, I kind of think they threw the backpack in so that we wouldn't think we were getting shorted on accessories, but 
I really don't think she needs it. It's just an extra thing. Let's take a look at the articulation of Zarena. She had the typical articulation of 1986 G.I. Joe action figures. That means she could move her head from left to right like that. She could also look up and down. Her neck was on a ball joint. She could move her arm up at the shoulder about so far. Uh, not as far as a lot of other figures from that era uh, because it's slightly obstructed by this armor plating on her arm. But she could swivel her arm all the way around. Uh, she had a hinge at the elbow. She could move the elbow about 90 degrees. She had a swivel at the bicep. She could swivel her arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That means she could move at the torso a little bit. She could move her legs apart about so far. She could move her leg at the hip about 90 degrees, and she could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Zorana, starting with the head, and this is where we get into the variant. The first versions of Zorana's head looked like this, and as you can see, she has earrings. This version of Zorana is known by the earrings. This is referred to as the Zorana with the earrings, uh, and she has this mohawk or faux hawk kind of thing on top of her head and that's a separate sculpted piece uh, that's glued onto her head that's not supposed to come off and she does have very bright kind of reddish pink hair this is really striking this first version of Zorana's head was replaced pretty quickly by this second version. Uh, Bill Merkline, the sculptor of the second Zorana head, said they changed it because the first version was not attractive enough. Uh, they just wanted a different look for it. Uh, so they came up with this. They did this as a running change. They did not change the packaging. They did not in any way announce it as a new version. They just changed the head and then just shipped them out. Uh, and so this is the second version of Zorana's head that we got. This is a very different look and this version does not have earrings and this is referred to as the Zorana without earrings. Uh, she has lipstick like the earlier version. Uh, even the sculpt on this sort of faux hawk bun kind of thing on her hair uh, is different. That's completely different not from the first version and, uh, and it is a very different look. She has sort of I'd say a longer face uh, than the sort of wider face from the first version. This second version of Zorana's head is more common and is probably the version that most of us remember, uh, but I have to admit I prefer the first version of Zorana's head. Uh, I think it was a little bit more detailed, uh, looked a little bit more natural. Uh, the second version has sort of a Bride of Frankenstein thing going on. On her chest she has a pink shirt that goes over only one shoulder, uh, and this is really pretty racy for 1986. It shows a lot of skin, uh, and that continues around to the back. The shirt is also kind of a midriff. She also has a holster strap that goes around to the back and a very tiny little pistol holster. In fact, it looks almost unfinished. It's kind of, the paint sort of just ends there. It doesn't even look like it's fully sculpted and that's kind of odd. Even stranger, she has a pistol holster but no pistol. So I really don't know why this is here. I, I assume it's just to add some detail to what they might might think is an otherwise plain shirt. Uh, but it's an unusual detail and I really don't get it. A couple observations about Zorana's chest. Uh, the chest is molded in the flesh color plastic and the pink is painted on. Now since there's this much pink, normally what they would do on these figures is they would make it out of the pink plastic uh, and paint the flesh tone on, but they couldn't do that with this figure because this is made out of that color change plastic. So they had to use the flesh colored plastic and paint the pink on, which unfortunately looks kind of bad when the pink paint starts to wear off. Uh, you start to see some of the flesh tone coming out through it. Another unusual thing about Zorana's chest is her chest and her back piece are glued together. Like all other G.I. Joe action figures, she has a screw in the back and normally that screw, if you took that out, you'd be able to pull the action figure apart, uh, take the over ring out. You can't really do that with Zorana because the chest and back pieces are glued together as they were with Zartan and with her brother Xandar. All of the figures that have the color change plastic gimmick uh, seem to have the chest and back pieces glued together. Why that is I can't be certain but uh, that is something that they all have in common. 
Her arms feature pink armored plating at the shoulders, and that piece is also shared by Zartan. Uh, same upper arms, just colored pink for her. And Xandar has it too, except his are in blue. She has some black and red gloves that have a really nice texture pattern on them. And some elbow pads that look pretty vicious. They look like spiked elbow pads. That's some great detail on the gloves. Uh, excellent arms. Her waist piece is very small, unusually small. Definitely smaller than uh, the male action figures for G.I. Joe. I assume they did this to make her look a bit more feminine. Uh, she has kind of a reddish belt uh, and she has blue trousers which I guess are probably blue jeans. Uh, she has this odd little sort of belt thing that comes off to her right side that just sort of stops there. I think maybe this was intended to uh, be an extension that went down to this uh, sheath that where she has this dagger on her thigh but that's not actually sculpted or painted in. It just sort of stops there. Looks a little bit unusual. On her right thigh, she does have that really nicely detailed dagger, and the handle on that has some gold metallic paint, and as usual, that metallic shiny paint that Hasbro used, it came off very easily. It's often rubbed off. It's partially gone on mine. There were some other bits on her that had that shiny paint, uh, kind of like the buckles on her shoulder holster here, and a lot of that paint is also gone, so that's something to watch out for. On her left thigh, she has a huge rip in her jeans and under that rip we don't have a flesh color we have this pink color which I assume means that she's wearing pink tights under her jeans uh, and she has knee pads I really like knee pads uh, it's a great feature and these are really nicely detailed knee pads uh, got a really cool design to them she's got some tall black boots uh, and these boots are also kind of unique they're sort of like cowboy boots they uh, have pointed toes and they have spurs and that's kind of a nice uh, little addition that's a nice touch uh, really unique looking boots and a really uh, nice sculpt overall let's take a look at Zarena's file card the file card was printed on the back of the card on which the figure was packaged you can see some of the artwork from the front of the card here and it has her faction as the enemy and that is correct uh, she was not an agent of Cobra at least not when she was first introduced so it just says the enemy there it doesn't have say Cobra. It has a portrait of her and I have to admit the portrait looks more like the newer head, the no earrings head, than it does the original head. So I think the portrait better reflects the later version of her. Rumor has it this design of Zorana was inspired by Wendy O. Williams and early design sketches uh, did not have this armor plating on her and she had a tattoo on her arm and there were some other minor differences. It has her code name as Zorana. It says that's her code name, not her real name. In fact, it doesn't say anything about her real name. And it says she's Zartan's sister, which I think is kind of funny. Obviously, that's not her specialty. They just really wanted to make sure that Zorana was associated with Zartan, the very popular character. It does not list her primary or secondary military specialty or her place of birth, as it usually does on these file cards. In the G.I. Joe animated series, I think Zorana's accent was vaguely Australian-ish. That would fit with the Dreadnoughts, since most of the Dreadnoughts are from Australia, but it was never clear exactly where Zartan was from. The file card split into two paragraphs, and this top paragraph says, Zorana is a professional assassin who gains access to her victims through skillful acting and masterful use of makeup and disguise. So she is a master of disguise, like her brother, so it could have listed master of disguise on her specialty, but of course it didn't. They just just wanted to make sure she was associated with Zartan. While her brother Zartan concentrates on the purely physical aspects of disguise, Zarana works from the method actor's point of view to completely become the object of her impersonation, to think, feel, and react like another person. She is an expert in small arms, explosives, and edged weapons. Like her two brothers, she also has the ability to change skin color. This ability to change skin color is never explained. We have no idea why they have have that ability. Also, it says she's an assassin and she's an expert in small arms and explosives, so it would have been nice if she had come with some assassin's weapons other than this spur weapon here. Maybe a sniper rifle, maybe some explosives, something like that. This bottom paragraph has a quote. It says, Zarena
Joanna could have had a brilliant career on the professional stage if the evil in her nature hadn't been so strong. She throws tantrums, cuts ahead on lines, and never leaves a tip. I think it's funny that some of the examples of her evil nature are really just petty rudeness. She posed as an oral hygienist for six months on one assignment, armed only with a reel of specially coated dental floss to incapacitate her unwitting victims. She escaped, dressed as a granny lady hobbling on a walker, right past the cops and into a cab. The cabbie remembered her. She didn't leave a tip. A note on regional dialect, it says she cuts ahead on lines, and that's kind of an eastern thing, where you stand on line. Uh, in the Midwest and a lot of other parts of the country, you stand in line, so that would say she cuts ahead in lines. Her file card speaks to a lot of skill in disguise, but it also speaks to some general anti-social behavior, like throwing tantrums. The whole thing about never leaving a tip kind of reminds me of Reservoir Dogs. Come on, throw in a buck. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. You don't believe in tipping? As she was depicted in the G.I. Joe comic book, though, she was a fairly strong leader, and she sort of became the de facto leader of the Dreadnoughts uh, when Zartan wasn't around. Looking at the figure overall, this is a very 80s style punk. It's colorful and flashy. Uh, it's very non-conformist, which really fits with the Dreadnoughts. And you can definitely tell this is a bad guy. In the G.I. Joe universe, the sort of non-conformity, you know, flashy style was usually associated with the bad guys. The Dreadnoughts were kind of established as the weirdos in the G.I. Joe universe, and Zorana really kind of reflects that. The figure has some great detail and some very bright and interesting colors, and I think it was a very wise choice, since they went with bright colors like this, to stick with a fairly simple color scheme. We have pink, blue, and a little bit of pinkish red, and that's it. It would have been very easy to go overboard with excessive colors, and that would have really uh, messed it up. For instance, I think the way they did Xandar. They really went overboard with Xandar, but this is not a review of Xandar, so I'll save my comments about Xandar for another video. I think the tiny holster is weird and kind of out of place. Uh, however, this empty holster was in the original design art uh, by Ron Rudat, who designed this character for Hasbro. I just don't really know why it's there. Why does she have an empty holster? And why is it so tiny on the action figure. In the G.I. Joe comic book, Zarana is very strong-willed, like her brother Zartan, whereas her other brother Xandar sort of fades into the background, really doesn't have much of a personality at all. One of the first things Zarana did when she was introduced in the G.I. Joe comic book was rescue Zartan, who was held captive by the Joes. Zarana also had a very memorable fight with Lady J following the Cobra Civil War. In the G.I. Joe animated series, very interesting Zarena developed romantic feelings for one of the G.I. Joes, Mainframe. And this is where I would normally show you the Mainframe action figure, but I don't have a Mainframe action figure. Which is weird, because I thought I had one, but apparently I don't. Why don't I have a mainframe? I like mainframe. Note to self, get a mainframe action figure. Zorana was also featured very prominently in the 1987 G.I. Joe animated movie, but we don't really like to talk about that. Okay, I'm in my backyard for another test of the color-changing feature. Uh, this time we're going to test it for Zorana. And just for comparison purposes, I put Zartan and Xandar under this box as well. I'm going to lift the box expose them to direct sunlight and we will watch them change color here we go all right and there they go all right you can see Zartan is definitely changing color very quickly sorry about the noise in the background uh, his skin tone is color changing very dramatically Zarana I can see a little bit of skin color change there, not as much. On the newer version, it seems to be more pronounced on the, the new head version, uh, although it's made of the same plastic, this is co changing color much faster. Uh, let's see, yeah, doing a little bit better on this one, uh, getting a little bit of a darker skin tone. And Xandar really is changing color quite a lot. Xandar's uh, color changing skin is doing quite well. Get a lot of color change on that. 
After several minutes of direct sunlight exposure, we get dramatic skin color changes on Zartan, uh, on this version of Zarana, and on Xandar, but this first, uh, this earring version of Zarana still is not changing color very much. I wonder if it's just my, my copy. Uh, maybe, I don't know, there's uh, something defective about the plastic, uh, but this Zarana uh, did change color very well. That was my review of Zarana and her variant and her file card. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're thinking of getting a Zarana action figure, I hope you found this video informative. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up on YouTube and make sure you subscribe. I've got a lot of great new G.I. Joe toy reviews coming up. You don't want to miss them. And don't forget to like the Facebook page. You get a lot of updates there you don't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week with the next G.I. Joe toy review video. Here's the Cobra Swamp Fire aborted our Zartan sister Zarana and their brother. Zandar. Swamp Copper changes color in bright sunlight. Takes to the air to continue the fight. And now you're looking at the Dreadnoughts Thunder Machine. Dreadnoughts Thunder Machine. Meanest machine you've ever seen. And it's time to get G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Live the adventure of G.I. Joe. Cobra Swamp Fire and Dreadnoughts Thunder Machine with drivers sold separately. Yeah.